Grab your coffee, your tea, your wine, your water, whatever you like to drink, and let's go to Africa together. In this video, I wanna talk about all the details of our recent family trip to Africa, including what I wore, what I packed, and answer all of your questions. Let's do it. Hi ladies, it's Erin and welcome back to my channel. I'm so excited to share this adventure with you all and share some of the details. I think even if you aren't planning a trip to Africa, there's gonna be something in this video for you. I'm gonna give packing tips. I'm gonna talk about the adventure itself, what the trip meant to me. I'm gonna share stories. I'm gonna share really cool pictures and videos of animals. I think you're really gonna love it. Like you don't have to be planning that trip to enjoy this video, I guarantee it, okay? So first let's start out with the fashion, the packing. And I had kind of envisioned like this, you know, out of Africa moment and really having these beautiful stylish safari appropriate outfits, but there was a restriction on how much you could take with you because you're traveling on very small airplanes. So I could only bring 40 pounds total. So typically in a carry-on you could bring up to 50 pounds, usually you know, in a carry-on, you probably only fit 40 pounds anyway, but you know, you usually have like, I don't know, you could have 50, 60 pounds easily and still have a carry-on. So in this situation, it was a duffel bag. It was a very specific size duffel. It was a very specific shape duffel. It had to have a flat bottom with rounded edges and 40 pounds total. So for me, it was the biggest packing challenge of my life, I would say. Yeah, for sure. So as I always do, when I started kind of figuring out, okay, I need this, I need this, I need this, I took pictures of all my outfits and created a photo album on my phone called Africa Outfits. So this was really helpful in just like delineating like how much do I have, what do I need? And also I could reference it on the trip if I wanted to, but I didn't really need to. It was just really helpful in the packing process to see it all there. Plus. Sometimes when you put something on, you look in the mirror, it can look very different than if you're taking a photo of it and looking at the photo. I've talked about this a lot. So it's very helpful to see it through the prism of the photo. And so I created my album. I started to get the pieces together that I needed. I did a lot of research. So I was reading through all of these blog posts, like what to pack for a trip to Africa. And I just want to tell you that when you look online, you're going to find a lot of recommendations to buy all this really specific technical gear or super outdoorsy brands, which I get. And I already have a lot of this stuff because we live in the mountains in Telluride, Colorado. So, you know, like Merrill, hardcore hiking boots or, you know, your North Face rain jacket or all of these things that I truly don't think you need. All right, provided you're going during the dry season, if you're going during the wet season, you're gonna need a really heavy duty rain jacket. I just wanna like liberate you from this idea that you have to get the Merrill hiking boots or the Solomon, you know, speed cross runners. You don't need the technical gear that you think you need or that people tell you you need. And I do feel like most of the packing lists online were geared for men who really, like in my husband's case, he doesn't really care what he looks like. He's like, he just throws stuff in a suitcase and he's good. But I wanted to really feel good and look good on the safaris and on this trip. And that's the way I always wanna feel. I always wanna feel confident. I wanna feel comfortable. I wanna feel good and stylish. And so it was, like I said, the greatest packing challenge because you were limited to the 40 pounds. I also wanted to bring my nice camera, the one I'm filming on right now. I wanted to bring my big lens, a tripod, all of these things. You gotta bring shoes, obviously. And so it was, it was really challenging. So I'm gonna get a little bit into the packing and what I wore, but I did create a full packing list. So for those of you who may be actually planning a trip during the dry season, hopefully this list will really help you. And you know, you can just print it out, go through and make sure you have everything you need. So I wanna talk about a few key pieces that I did bring that I think were the most important pieces. And that was hat, I really, think you need a hat just to keep you sun safe so that your visibility is better. Because the whole point of being there is to see the animals and to see the landscape. So you wanna make sure you really do have great, great hat, great sunglasses. You've gotta have a great jacket. We went during a time when it was still very chilly in the mornings and chilly in the evenings. So layers were key. And this is 
This is the same thing if you're traveling to Europe in the summer. Like Europe in the summer, you can get down to like 40 and you're freezing. I've been to UK in the summer and it's like, oh my gosh, I have sandals and my, I'm so cold I can't take it. So layers, light layers are always a good idea if you're planning to travel, whether it's Southern Africa or Europe. So the jacket was really important, the pants were really important, and my shoe choices were really important. And I'll get more into the shoes in a minute. Let's start with a hat. I just brought my rag and bone felt hat. It was the one that I felt worked the best with the most clothes that I had already planned to pack. It was also very comfortable. It fits my head really well. I love it. I think it's stylish. So I brought that one hat. You could do a baseball hat if you wanted to, if that's more like your style, but I really wanted to have more of like a safari feeling hat. So I brought my rag and bone felt hat. Then the jacket, I found this amazing Veronica Beard jacket. I think I've shared a little bit about it here already, but it is a utility jacket that's a little longer, but you can zip off the bottom so it becomes a crop jacket. When I was out on safari, I almost always wore it as a utility jacket. Again, it was very chilly in the mornings and the um, evenings. So I just loved the jacket. I love the look of the jacket. I love the heft of the jacket. It wasn't too heavy. It was light. Also, the important thing with the jacket, I think, and with any jacket, is does it layer over those layers? Because some can be so tight, like a moto jacket, for example, where you know, you're know you doing this and it doesn't feel very comfortable. Will it layer nicely over a long sleeve tee, for example? Will it layer over your short sleeve tees? Will it layer over a light sweater? Those are the things I was looking for in that jacket. So this Veronica Beard jacket, you know, fit the bill perfectly. I felt like it was just like the perfect jacket to have on this trip. And by the way, I've worn it a bunch since I've been home too. It's just a great jacket, period, end of story. But for this trip in particular, it was just so, so perfect. I also did bring a dark green, like olive green jacket by Good American. But truth be told, I didn't wear that one as much as I wore the Veronica Beard. And I probably could have just ditch the good American jacket and gone solely with the Veronica Beard jacket. For pants, I wanted to have two pairs of pants that I could wear on safari. So I geared all of my packing for safari because we spent the most time doing that. Like I feel like if you're gonna go to Africa, you gotta go see the animals, right? So the first pair of pants that I brought were my page joggers in, in the dark olive green. And then I brought another pair, almost like sweatpants, that are by James Purse. These are old, I've had them for years. And so I ended up wearing the page ones almost every single day. So again, I probably could have ditched the joggers, but it was nice to have another pair of pants in case. Most of the camps will do laundry for you, so it's nice to have an extra pair. So if you wanna wash those pants, you have that extra pair of pants that you can throw on to wear that day that they're being washed. So my page joggers were so comfortable I felt like they were streamlined, created shape, even with all the layers, and I just felt really good in them, and that, I think, was the most important thing. Again, I just wanted to feel comfortable, I wanted to feel stylish, I wanted to feel great, and those pants really were awesome. The third thing that was so important are the shoe choices, and I really only had space for three pairs of shoes, and I think this is the case you know, just generally speaking, if you're carrying on, you wanna to try to limit yourself to three pairs of shoes. And so I brought a pair of dark brown side zip water resistant boots by Sam Edelman. I broke them in before I left and they were perfect for the trip. They had a great tread. They were easy to get on, easy to get off. I love the way they look. Again, you read blog posts online and you're gonna find, oh, get those hiking boots. I don't know about you, but hiking boots are not attractive. I don't think they look good. <laughs> and I didn't wanna be wearing hiking boots on safari. And BTW, you don't leave the truck that much. So you don't really need to be hiking up a mountain or anything. So my Sam Edelman boots looked great. They were comfortable, easy to get on, easy to get off, had grip. You know, you have to climb in and out of the trucks, so they were easy to climb with, but they also look very stylish, which I thought was really important. So you don't need to buy the super technical gear. Like I can't say that enough. Don't do it. You know, bring pieces that really light you up that you're excited to wear. Another thing that I found when doing research about safari and what to wear was that they really recommended wearing specific colors. And they said to avoid wearing super dark colors, really light colors, 
bright colors, no, because you don't want to, like white attracts mosquitoes, bright colors can be seen, I guess, with animals, and so they really encourage you to do the, like, the beiges and the browns and the khakis, the greens, those colors, and so that's really what you'll see here that I wore mostly, those really neutral tones. There are a couple of other key accessories I just wanted to mention that really made me feel like everything was pulled together, three really. Sunglasses, and I brought my Fendi aviators. Also a scarf in the morning. Again, it was cold. In the evening, it was cold. It also looked very stylish, so I loved having my scarf. And then also my belt. So I brought an older Bosch belt with me that was brown and sort of matched the color of the boots. And I loved having the belt with the scarf and the sunglasses and the hat. Like it all just sort of added to the outfit and made it feel complete. And it made it feel very stylish and pulled together. And then once you took off the layers, like you could do a short sleeve tee, you could do a puff sleeve, short sleeve tee. I did a lot of Nation LTD tees. I had a brown one. I had a tan one. I had a green one. I had a white one. Then I also brought my white button down my rails. You guys are like, all right, is she really talking about that again? Yes, I am. It's so great. It's cotton, gauzy cotton, easy to care for, lightweight. I styled it both as a shirt and also as a swim cover up. It's just a really versatile, great piece to have. So I would wear that sometimes under the jacket and with the same page joggers. It was just a great piece to have on the trip. For non-safari activities, I did bring a romper. This one's by Jonathan Simkai in also a dark green. It is very short, so if you are not petite, do not buy this romper. The rise in particular is gonna be too short for you. If you're petite, I'd say five, four and under, it's a great romper. I really enjoyed having that during the day. So like when we would go to lunch, like having something that was cool, but also just easy to throw on, a one and done piece. You guys know I love a one and done piece. You could also have like a little sundress. Yeah, so just whatever you wanna bring for those afternoons when you're not on safari, you're going to lunch, or maybe you're hanging out in the room. It's just nice to have a quick, cute one and done piece to throw on. I did bring two dresses, both maxi length. In hindsight, I wish I had done one maxi and one like midi or knee length dress, but this was what I decided to do. So I brought this pink Jonathan Simkai dress that's very beautiful, and I wore that a couple of times at night for dinner, but I had to wear a jacket over it because it would be quite chilly in the evenings. And then I also brought this brown cutout maxi that is super lightweight, paper thin. It would be great for any kind of like hot weather trip you have coming up. But I just thought it was very elegant and pretty and feminine, but then it still felt like appropriate for tented camp at night, you know, with the nice dark chocolate brown color. And so I really loved having that piece with me too. With the dresses, I just wore my sandals. I brought my Madewell sandals that are again, easy to get on, easy to get off, have a lot of tread. They are simple, casual. And in some of the tented camps, you are walking on like a lot, like tall grass or almost like hay. In one of the camps, it was almost like hay we were walking on. So you don't really want anything too precious. You don't want heels. You just really want something that's very functional with some tread. Again, that's that's easy to get on and easy to get off. I also brought a couple of pairs of shorts for daytime. So I had the Veronica Beard shorts that match the jacket, which I really love to wear the jacket and the shorts together. And then also a pair of DL 1961, like linen cotton shorts in the dark green. And those were just, again, easy. I could alternate between the romper and the shorts looks during the day. The other thing that I really loved having was my brown leather sling bag from Banana Republic. It's leather and I would just put my phone in it and a pair of sunglasses and I could bring a tote with the camera and everything if I wanted to, but it was just nice to have that like at the ready so I could just like pull it out of the sling bag and take a picture, take a video really quickly. And again, it looked really nice. It looked very intentional. It tied in with the belt and the boots. It just went with the overall look. Oh, the scarf, by the way, is also from Banana Republic and it has sort of a safari theme on it. So I thought it would be perfect. <laughs> it's in the same color family as the browns and the greens. So we'll put links to everything that I brought on the trip below in the description box. And then also you can check that blog post where the full packing list is and there are links there as well, whatever is easier for you. I mean, if you're serious about the trip, I would definitely go over and read the blog post. But you can also ask any questions that you might have here. We'll put the duffel bag that I bought for me and the family below in the description box too, so you have that. But any questions that you might have, feel free. What I want is that if you're going on this trip, 
you don't stress about what to pack and that you also know like I can bring stylish clothes. I don't have to bring all this technical gear and I'm going to wear layers and that's a scoop. Okay. Those are the three key takeaways. All right. We're going to get into the animals in a minute, but I wanted to ask you how many of you were with me when I did my video about turning 40. Anyone? That was a long time ago, eight years ago, almost nine years ago. <laughs> and I talked about in that video, one of the things was I, I wanted to go to Africa. It was like a bucket list trip for me. And so this trip just really meant a lot to me. It was something I wanted to do for a very long time. It was something I wasn't sure was ever going to happen because we planned a trip originally many, many years ago. And then Chris shattered his hip like the week before we were supposed to go. And so we had to cancel that whole trip. And then we planned another trip and it was right before COVID and then it got canceled because of COVID. And so I literally was like, well, maybe this trip is not meant to be. You know? <laughs> I get it. All right. So it was just really great that we finally were able to do it and make it happen. And it really didn't disappoint. It was such a magical experience, such an adventure, such a surreal experience. You know, you just can't even believe how beautiful the landscape is in Africa and how lovely the people are and all of the animals that are just roaming free. It's just really special. We flew in to Johannesburg. We only stayed there overnight at the airport hotel. And then we flew to Kasani. From Kasani, we drove to Chobe and we stayed at a place called the Sanctuary. We chose the Sanctuary because it had enough space for the whole family, like two bedroom lodges. And also it was right next to the park where all the animals were. So the location was perfect. And we chose everything through that lens of, is this a great setup for the family? We didn't really feel comfortable like going to a tented camp in the middle of uh, Savannah and putting the kids in a separate tent to our tent. We wanted everybody to be together because you are literally out among wild animals. So it just felt better to me to have us all together. And so that was really part of the criteria. So if you're going just you and your husband or you and your partner, you know, you might choose different places to stay, but you know, because you'll have more options essentially. So we went to Chobe, then we went to Nabera in the Okavango Delta. So a Delta is where part of the year is flooded with water, just like the Mississippi Delta. And so that was our second stop. And I would say my favorite place for sure. Then we went back to Kasani. We drove to Zimbabwe to see Victoria Falls. And then we drove back to Kasani and flew to Cape Town. I'll talk about Cape Town at the end. Okay, just had to change locations because the drywaller is here. There are some cracks in the ceiling up in my office space. And I don't know those of you that know, but we built our house and moved in well over a year ago. And that part of the process I thought was so incredible and so fun and exciting. The fix all the little things after you move in part, not so much. <laughs> Anyway, so I'll be here for the rest of the video. So wanna talk definitely about the animals, safari, answer all of your questions. I didn't know what to expect going in. I hadn't really heard a lot or seen a lot. I wanted to really go in with low expectations and just kind of open. That's sort of how I try to approach most of the experiences that I have now because I find that when I have a lot of expectation, then I usually, I think I limit the possibility of what that experience could be. So I really wanted to go into this experience just open-hearted, open-minded, and kind of just let it unfold. And I really am happy that I approached it from that place. You know, there were certain animals I definitely wanted to see, but I really did see all the animals that I wanted to see. So the part of being on safari was so thrilling. Well, let me start with how it works. So in the morning, early morning, you have your breakfast, then you get into the safari vehicle, which Chris like wants 10 of them. He loves them so much. You get into the safari vehicle. We were on our own, just our family in one vehicle. And then you go out and you start driving around looking for animals. And so the guides who live in that place where they're taking you on safari know where to go to look for the animals, but there's never a guarantee. Like it's still like millions of acres of land and wild animals. So you don't know exactly what you're gonna see, where you're gonna see it. So we saw on our safaris, we saw, I feel like everything except maybe a cheetah. We saw female lions, 
We saw female lions hunting and killing a warthog, which was incredible to see. I know some of you will be like, ah, I wouldn't want to see that, but it was just really cool and wild and you're like, wow, okay. We saw male lions, we saw hyena, we saw wildebeest, we saw giraffes, we saw baby giraffes, we saw elephants, baby elephants, baby lions by the lion cubs, by the way. We saw Cape buffalo, we saw crocodiles, we saw zebras, of course. And one of the things that struck me is how easily all of these animals camouflage into the landscape. You think, oh, there's no way a Cape buffalo can just disappear in that landscape or an elephant or a lion or a giraffe even. No way, but they do, they just disappear. Like you see them one second and the next second, like they're gone. In one of our tented camps, and that was the one was actually my absolute favorite. It's by a company called and Beyond. We were sitting and having our lunch and you could hear like, you know, like all these branches breaking. And I was like, what's that? And I look over and an elephant comes out of a bush, like <laughs> right by the deck where we were sitting having lunch. It was the coolest thing ever. I really love that authenticity about the experiences that we had. It wasn't like, you know, I've seen this place on Instagram where the giraffes like come up and you feed them and they drink out of the pool and things like that. But this felt like the animals are just doing what they're doing. And if you get to see them, then great. But it's not in any way contrived. It's all wild, all natural. And I just thought, really thought that was amazing. So you get into your safari vehicle, you drive around looking for the animals. And one of the things that I thought was so crazy is that you can get so close to these animals in this vehicle. And there was a point where one of the female lions was right next to the truck. She was actually using the truck to shield herself and hide herself so that she could hunt the warthog. And I was just like, how is this even possible? Like, how can we get within five feet of a male lion and he doesn't even, it doesn't even, it like, doesn't even register that you're there? Well, that's exactly it. And this was one of the most common questions. They see you as one unit in the vehicle, inside the vehicle. They don't see you as like individuals inside the vehicle. And then your smells are masked by the smell of the diesel from the truck. So you were able to get really, really close to these animals and they didn't really care a thing about you. The other part is, you know, the lions especially, they see the trucks from the time they're cubs. So they're used to the trucks. They don't feel threatened by the trucks. They know that the trucks are not a danger to them. I would imagine this would be different if it was an area where like hunting was taking place. But in the case of these safaris, the animals were not at all intimidated by the trucks. I think the most skittish animal was the wildebeest. So whenever you kind of pulled up close to the wildebeest, that was like, you know, took off. And zebras were pretty skittish too about the trucks. But all the other animals were like, eh, you know, super chill about it, which I just found fascinating. So you would literally be in the truck and there'd be a male lion like right there. And you're just like, oh, you know, like your adrenaline. And it's just so thrilling. It really is incredibly thrilling. I think my favorite moment on safari was when we had heard about a leopard in the tree sleeping and we rode up to the tree in the safari truck and I saw the leopard on the tree just chilling like a branch. And it was really easy to see because the branch was low, the leaves on the trees were up quite high. And then the leopard kind of woke up and stretched out and then slowly walked down from the branch and the tree. And then we followed the leopard for a little while. The leopard's just so magnificent and beautiful. And it was just, that was really incredible. And I think just all of our interactions with the lions was really, you know, thrilling and special too. So after we went on safari for six days, then we went to Victoria Falls. I will say if you're gonna go to Victoria Falls, you probably don't wanna go when the water is really high. It's really difficult to see the falls because there's so much water that it creates all this mist. And so you're basically just seeing a cloud of mist, not the actual falls during like the drier season or when the falls aren't so you know, full, that's when you can actually see them a lot better. Obviously they're amazing. It's one of the seven wonders of the world. In Zimbabwe and in uh, Victoria Falls, we also did a canopy tour. You know, that's where you hook up to a zip line and go from, you know, place to place. My kids did this big epic zip line together that I was like, I don't really need to be doing that. <laughs> 
But if you want to do it, have at it. And we also had a really neat elephant excursion where these trainers took us over to where the wild elephants hang out. So these elephants are all being prepared for the wild, but they're also in the wild. So we were able to, you know, get close to the elephants, feed the elephants, touch the elephant's skin, and that felt really special. And I think the kids really love that too. There were also monkeys and baboons everywhere. I forgot to mention the monkeys. Oh, and the other thing that was crazy about safari were these termite mounds. Some of them were like, it's like you'd be like, this is like the Empire State Building of termite mounds. Like they were huge. So that was, it was really like, it's an architectural feat for these termites, I think, <laughs> to build these giant mounds. Another thing I really enjoyed about safari was just the beauty of the landscape. It reminded me a little bit of South Texas. You know, the trees are fewer and far between and shorter, and there's lots of tall grass, and it's just so beautiful. And I thought it was gonna be super buggy, like mosquitoes everywhere, and like I would have to be like slathered in bug spray all the time. And it wasn't like that at all. I think I saw one mosquito on the whole trip that I noticed, so it really, it kind of reminded me of Telluride where we don't really have bugs. Yeah, there weren't a lot of bugs at all, which I really appreciated. <laughs> yeah, so the landscape really caught me by surprise, just how stunning it really was. And I think I was also a little surprised by the climate because it was quite dry. It was a little bit more humid than what I'm used to. because my hair like poofed out, but it wasn't as humid as like, let's say Houston or San Antonio or, you know, Florida, a lot of other places in the US where it can be super humid and, and definitely not buggy. So that was a real big surprise. So anyway, back to Victoria Falls. So we stayed, saw the falls, had the elephant excursion, did the zip line things, you know, had some really nice meals there. Then we drove back to Kasani and then flew from Kasani to Cape Town. Cape Town was another big surprise for me. I really had very little expectation. Actually going into Cape Town, I was thinking, you know, we really could have gone home early, had a few extra days on the back end or spent three more days on safari because the safari was so wonderful that I was like, how are we gonna, how are we gonna top that? You know, that was just epic. But Cape Town really caught me by surprise. I really fell in love almost immediately with Cape Town, just the beauty the natural beauty it reminded me of like what San Francisco was like. It was that type of climate where it was cooler. There's lots of mountains, there's the ocean. It's just really spectacularly beautiful. In Cape Town, we wanted to go out and see some whales. So we went whale watching one day and we did see just like whales were everywhere and it's not even whale watching season. The thing about the whales though, when you're out on the boat, you have to stay pretty far away from them. So we did see one whale breach and jump out of the water and back in, which was incredible. I was just like, it happened so fast. I was just like, did I really just see that? Did that just happen? <laughs> like, did you all see that? <laughs> it was surreal. And then there was another moment where two of them, like I saw both their tails come up at the same time and go back into the water. And that was really special. But I really would have loved to be closer to the whales. Like you were pretty far away from them. And then my kids, Engage especially, wanted to go swim with the sharks cage diving, cage diving. So we went out to go do that. And Chris and I were just like, well, we'll just let the kids go. And then they said, you really need an adult with the kids. So Chris was like, I'll go with the kids. And I was like, thank you. Cause I don't really want to do that. The water was freezing even with a wetsuit. And truth be told, like the water was pretty murky. So I could probably see the sharks better than they could from the boat. But I was so impressed with both kids cause they got into that water. They had, you know, a tube to breathe through. They were underwater, but not very far underwater. And they're in the cage and then they're like chumming the waters for the sharks to come closer. And the sharks are like nine feet long. They're really, really huge. Not great whites, but still huge sharks. And both kids like hung in there like champs. They were not scared and, and they really loved it. So that was fun to watch, you know, watch them do that. But it was also fun to stay in the boat. <laughs> because it was also cold outside. So I was like, I don't really want to get into that water that's freezing cold. I think I'll just stay here. So anyway, that was really fun for them and it was fun for me too um, from, from the boat. We also had some great food in Cape Town. The food was amazing. Just really enjoyed the city. Like it's just a beautiful city. 
and it was like a place where I feel like, oh, I could live here. It's really special, really beautiful. All right, so now I want to get into some of the questions. You know, I talked a little bit about the travel agent that we hired, and we'll put her info, her email in the description box below. So we did not do this whole thing alone. We did have some help. We did schedule it really far in advance. Remember, we scheduled it pre-COVID. That got canceled, and then we had to redo the trip, which I think most of the reservations were about the same, but we did have to modify a couple things. We did also choose where we were staying based on can we all be together. So for example, in our and beyond tented camp, they had a setup where there were two tents like this together, but separate. And then there was a pathway between the two tents connecting them that was also enclosed. So even though they were separate tents, we could easily get into each other's tents. And that was really important to us. So we wanted to find a place where we could all be together. But Michelle, the travel agent, really helped us with that. Okay, so I think I already answered this question, but this one is, I can't believe how close you were to the lions. How did you know that they wouldn't attack you guys? And that was, again, like they didn't even look at us. They didn't register that we were even individuals. Now, if we had stepped outside of the truck when we were near the lions, then we would have potentially been attacked because then we would have been like a separate entity that they were not sure what we were and then we would have been in real danger but being inside the truck they didn't actually see us and they couldn't smell us so that was how you're able to get so close to the animals plus these animals are trained from an early age to not feel threatened by the trucks so that also helps. Did I feel safe the entire time? This is an interesting question. I wondered the same thing, not necessarily about the animals, but more about like the cities. So we did not go into Johannesburg, which I think Johannesburg can be somewhat unsafe. We didn't go into the city of Johannesburg, but I felt very safe in Cape Town. I felt very safe on safari most of the time. Like a couple of times I was like, my heart's pumping and pumping, but you know, I just sort of took the lead from the guides who do this day after day after day for years. You know, they were obviously very calm. They told us it was safe. They're not gonna put us in harm's way. So we really trusted them. And I would say, you know, in Zimbabwe, Victoria Falls, I felt very safe. I did feel like it was very safe. I felt more safe in all of the spots that we went to in South Africa than I did in Egypt last year. So I'll say that. Tips for scheduling a safari. I would do a safari in Botswana. It's just like millions of acres of land and it's so wild. Like you're just like, wow. I think it's remained pristine for a couple of reasons. Like number one, because they depend on tourism and so they wanna preserve this resource. And number two, it's a delta. So remember I said it fills up with water part of the year. So you can't really build on a delta. So they've really done a great job maintaining the wildness of the landscape and keeping the land preserved so that the animals have a place to live. So I feel like if you're gonna do safari, go to Botswana. The other thing I would say about safari, you know, thinking about what you need in terms of accommodation. Like remember, we needed a place that was big enough for the whole family. So that really kind of limited where we could go, where we could stay, and then get some help. Like if you're not sure, like where's the great place to go, then you can always ask a travel agent who has experience and knows you know the ins and outs the other thing you can do is just look at instagram or search up hashtags and i bet you find some of the best lodges just from browsing instagram next question what was my favorite part of the trip 100 percent hands down safari no comparison none there is nothing like seeing these animals in their natural environment it is incredible. I posted on Instagram a little highlight reel from our trip and someone wrote, you'll never want to go to the zoo again. And that is exactly what I felt like. And that's what my son Gage told me. He's like, I don't think we can ever go to a zoo again. I remember thinking I took the kids, I don't know if you remember this trip, but I took the kids to Disney World and we stayed at the Animal Kingdom Lodge and we saw all these animals at the Animal Kingdom Lodge. And you know, that's cool, whatever. But while I was there, I remember thinking like, oh, am I ruining Africa for them? because they're seeing the giraffes and they're seeing the zebras and they're seeing all this stuff. No, <laughs> no, not even close. Like it does not compare. There is no comparison to seeing these animals in their natural environment doing what they do. It is so incredible. That was 100% my favorite part of the trip. All right, what advice do you have for anyone wanting to do something similar? Go read my blog post about packing, hire a travel agent to help you and get going. 
did I buy any local clothes? No, we didn't buy any local clothes. I think we, we bought a few souvenirs, but we had packed so light and you know, we didn't have any extra bags to bring stuff back with. So we just got little things, little souvenirs. I just wanted to share another thing with you all about this. You know, leading up to the trip, I had just gotten back from Paris, which was a trip of a lifetime and so epic and so wonderful. And Chris had just been traveling for his work and both of us were just worn out and tired and thinking, gosh, we just really want to rest. Kind of secretly or not so secretly, don't really want to go this far away. And it's a lot, like it's a lot. It's a long, long flight. It's a full day of travel or two days of travel. It took us two days to get to Chobe, but it is so worth it. It is so worth it. And if you're in Europe, man, you're on the same time zone, you should be getting your butt to Africa stat. <laughs> I would go all the time if I were in Europe. It's a really magical, special place. I'm so glad I got to experience it and I'm so glad that I get to share it with all of you. And I'd love to hear your Africa stories, anything that you wanna share about Safari or Cape Town or Victoria Falls or what you did and what you saw. I would love to hear it. And I think everybody else would love to read through and see your favorite experiences and your key takeaways, anything on the packing front that you noticed. You know, I think from my perspective, again, like you don't need all that super technical gear that you think you need after you read all these packing lists online. You just you need to bring some strategic pieces. I don't know if Africa is on your bucket list or not, but I will say that you should go someplace or seek out experiences that make you feel alive, <laughs> that really light you up. And not every trip is like that, you know? Not every place you go is like that. So I think as we get older and time becomes more precious, it's really important to think about, you know, where is it that I really in my heart and a deep sense of knowing that I wanna go? And that's really where you should go. <laughs> Let me know if you guys have any questions at all. I feel like I barely scratched the surface, like I could talk about this for a long time. And I'm sure there are things I didn't answer or questions that you have that I didn't answer. So feel free to you know, share in the comments and do share your Safari Africa stories. Let us know if you do have any other packing questions. We're happy to help out on that front. Thanks for sharing this adventure with me. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. I hope you'll subscribe. By the way, you guys, remember, I'm on the LTK app, which makes it very easy to shop any of my outfits. If you're like, ah, I wanna shop that outfit or that piece or that jacket or those pants, um, all you do is follow me over on the LTK app and then you tap or click on any image and you can easily pull up all of the image links. It is the easiest app to use once you set up and you know how to do it. I promise it's not complicated to get set up either. It's very simple. You just have to sign up with email. Okay, thank you again so much for watching. Thanks for being here. I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.